I'm really excited to teach on this, um, uh, this session of my seminar on prayer because the title of this session is Praying in the Spirit, and I just love this. Ephesians 6.18, right after he talks about the different armor that we're to use in spiritual warfare, the protection that we have as we put on Jesus, it ends with this, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. In other words, prayer is kind of like that covering, that protection over all. Praying at all times in the Spirit. Now I want us to understand what in the Spirit means. Now we need to use the Bible to interpret the Bible. We can't use tr church tradition. We can't use pet doctrines or what we believe because of our upbringing. We have to go to the scriptures because the scriptures interpret themselves. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 15, it says, what am I to do? I will pray with the Spirit, in the Spirit, and I'll pray with my understanding, with my mind. In other words, there's a difference that Paul says about praying in the Spirit and praying with the mind. Praying with the mind is when we pray in a way that we understand what we're praying. When we pray in the Spirit, we're praying in a way that the Spirit understands. But we may not understand. Our mind may be, as the Bible says, unfruitful. In other words, we don't understand it with our mind. But we can perceive it with the Spirit. The, for our mind to understand it, our mind has to interpret it. In other words, we have to have interpretation. There is a filter then. That's why sometimes we, in things of the Spirit, we say, well, I think God is saying this, or I believe, you know, I, I get this impression. In other words, our mind is trying to grasp what the Spirit is saying. He who has joined himself to the Lord, it says in 1 Corinthians 6, 17, he who has joined himself to the Lord is one spirit with him. And so when the Holy Spirit speaks, he speaks to our spirit. And then our mind must interpret it. So praying in the spirit is something that is interior, is in us. We pray from our heart, praying in the spirit, from the spirit of God who has joined himself to our spirit. But to understand this in the Spirit, we must see it in different ways. The first way is by means of the Spirit. We can go to Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost. It says that the, the Holy Spirit came upon them as flames, as tongues of fire on each person. There was a mighty wind that came through the building and they all began to speak in tongues. And it says they were praying at all, they were speaking as the Spirit gave them utterance. In other words, they were speaking by means of the Spirit. The, the Spirit of God was giving them words to say. And they were saying it. It was, they were the ones speaking. The Holy Spirit wasn't speaking, but they were speaking what by means of the Holy Spirit gave them a new language. And that, that language was powerful because all those that, that came to Jerusalem that day, people from all around the world, each one heard the gospel, heard what they were saying in their own tongue because the Holy Spirit was speaking and they were receiving it in different ways. 1 Corinthians 14, 14. When I pray in the Spirit, my mind is unfruitful. So we're praying by means of the Spirit. So we need inter interpretation. The second way uh, we can interpret this praying in the Spirit is with the help of the Holy Spirit. Because there's many times in which we really don't know how to pray. Our mind is just kind of like in a blocked, is confused. 
We just don't know what is the will of God. We just don't know how we should really pray over this situation, over that person. Romans 8, 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And so it's beyond the natural language level. <laughs> It's beyond the mind. And he helps us in that time of weakness, in that time of confusion, in that time in which our mind is blocked. The Holy Spirit prays, intercedes for us. So that's a, another way of seeing praying in the Spirit, where the Holy Spirit helps us. Then there's another way of interpreting in the Spirit in the sphere of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit guides us in our time of prayer. It's like we get into another dimension, another sphere. John the Apostle, when he was on the island of Patmos, and uh, it says that he, on the Lord's Day, he was in the Spirit when he had this revelation of the end times. He was in the sphere. <laughs> he got into the spiritual realm. And God began to reveal things to him. His eyes were open to a new reality. He saw what he, what he didn't even have words to explain what he saw. And he had to, he had to try to express it in, in terms like, it was like this, it was, I, but he didn't have even the vocabulary to describe what he was seeing in the spirit, in this realm of the spirit. And many times, in prayer, we can get into a realm in which God begins to speak to us things we never thought we would ever say, or we'd have the boldness to say, <laughs> because now we have entered into the realm of the Spirit, and the Spirit is praying through us. Another way of interpreting this in the Spirit is in connection to the Holy Spirit. This is a total dependency. This is when we're not wanting to trust in our own ways of doing things. And we just say, Lord, use me. I wanna pray prophetically. I wanna pray your words. I wanna pray your way. Many times I've had that experience when I've been praying for someone, all of a sudden I'm praying things that only they knew I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know they were going through what I was praying for. I didn't know, but it was somehow it was revealing the secrets of their heart. And I saw them beginning to break down in prayer, in crying, weeping, because they knew that God had revealed it to me. And I was praying for them as I should pray. You see, this is being connected to, entering into the flow, and we're a channel of blessing to others. Praying in the Spirit is what builds us up. It edifies us. Jude, verse 20, it uh, says this, But you, beloved, building yourself up in your most holy faith and praying in the Spirit. When we pray in the Spirit, it's like charging our, our batteries, spiritual batteries. I remember one time years ago, I went with a, a co-pastor up to a town in the northern part of, of, um, of Portugal. It was before the freeways were built, and so it took a long time. It took about six, seven hours to, to drive uh, 300 kilometers. And, um, and we decided, let's not talk, let's not fellowship, let's just pray in the Spirit the whole way. And we did that. We just prayed in the Spirit. And I tell you, when we arrived in, at that city and we entered into the meeting, it was like the power of God was released. We had been building up our faith the whole way. For six hours, we were building up our faith. 
And when we came to minister, it was like there was a release of the gift of faith and many miracles took place. Praying in the spirit builds us up. I think that's the, if there's no other reason why we should pray in the spirit, that's a good reason. Just pray in the spirit. The Bible says praying in tongues because tongues is a language given to us by the spirit. It's not learned. It's not learned like I would learn Portuguese or I'd learn German or I'd learn another language. It's not, it's a gift given. It's a language. And it's been called, equated with praying in the spirit or praying in tongues. It's been equated in the Bible. It's the same thing. This is the only way I believe we can pray without ceasing or that as Ephesians says, pray at all times in the spirit. If this is the only way because you don't have to concentrate on things. You don't have to use your mind when you're praying in the spirit. You can pray in your heart in the spirit without using words, without moving your lips. You can just pray. You can allow the, the Holy Spirit to guide you day by day. Pray without ceasing. <laughs> Be vigilant in prayer. Pray. Paul said something interesting. He says, I pray in tongues more than anyone. And I've thought about that. You know, is he just boasting? No, I don't think he was boasting. I think he was, he was telling us a secret for his life because he went through an awful lot of crud. He went through persecutions, false brethren attacking him, lying about him, trying to defame him. Wow, that's enough. You, you kind of get your anger going. You want to say something that you shouldn't say. You know? He was beat with rods. He was beat with the cat of nine tables, a, 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 a whip, uh, just as Jesus was. But three times he took 39 lashes. He was shipwrecked three times. He was, he was left for dead. He was stoned. I mean, he had a lot of reasons to complain <laughs> about his life. He could have complained to, to God. He could have been angry. He, put, he could have wanted revenge and wanted to hold resentment and get upset. But he prayed in tongues. And he was able to control his tongue. He submitted his tongue to the Holy Spirit. And James says that person that does that is, is perfect in all his ways. Because the tongue can get us into more problems than any other member of our body. James says it's, it's put on fire from the very pits of hell. It can destroy in a moment people's lives. Yet as we pray in the spirit, we can be a blessing and edify people. So that's, that's why I believe Paul said, I, with confidence, I pray in tongues more than anyone else. I've been through more than, more than anyone else. And as I prayed in tongues, I've been able to control myself and the Holy Spirit has been able to work through me. So I want to encourage each one of you to not just pray in tongues when you feel like it, but make it a daily habit. May it be something you do all the time. Building up your faith by praying in the Spirit. Lord bless.